The Jews, quote unquote, see, there's, they are headed for something, yeah. And, and the Bible tells us what it is. And so we've been warned about him. He's dangerous. And Paul could see it coming together even in his day. Right. We're saying just a few decades from when Jesus died on the cross. Right. And yet through the hundreds of years, what this is 2017, for hundreds and thousands of years, he's not come yet. But we sure see a system that could easily usher him in and would welcome him with open arms. And if that wasn't true back through the centuries, and it was, because this is what the Bible believing Christians did, is it not true of us today? Are we not at the door? <laughs> Amen? Wow, what a time to be alive. And yet we see they got the technology and they got these little computer chips and things and they got plans for everybody. And they got good excuses to use them. <laughs> and so next we see his revelation to the world. It's an historic appearance. It's really coming. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So the time is set. It's a mystery of iniquity, like there's the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Well, there's a mystery of iniquity. There's a son of perdition that's going to come into this world. He's just going to come up out of the sea as if he's just another human being, as all the other human beings, and yet he's going to rise in ascendancy and he'll become the world ruler. He'll go in the temple, claim to be God, sit down and be God. But how come he's not been seen yet? Because he's being restrained. Because he is under God's restraints and God has made sure that it's not his time yet to be revealed. But his revelation day will come. And we'll see his appearance. When will we see his appearance? When the restraint is removed. Now that's what the verse is saying clearly. It said that, didn't it? Yes. Now... You know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let till he be taken out of the way. So God has kept this thing under wraps for many centuries. But it's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. Now here's the thing again. This is what unlocks this book of 2 Thessalonians, is the book of Revelation. We've just read Revelation chapter 13. We see how Revelation clearly says there's two dudes coming. And so we've read about Mr. Son of Perdition. Did we not? Yes. Well, now we're introduced to a new personage in the next verse, verse 8. Then shall that capital W wicked be revealed. Mr. Wicked is coming. But the Bible first tells us the Son of Man will be revealed when the restraint is pulled off of him. And then it's going to be obvious. Well, thou, all oh, the average Baptist pastor, oh, he's so full of himself and he's trying to make some logical sense out of this. This sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook and, and it sounds like a mystery and a riddle that can't be figured out. And people are saying, well, what could it be that it was even around back then, but it's going to be restrained, but then it's finally done. And so they come up with all kinds of uh, things that they think sound logical, like, uh, well, it's the Roman system, it's a Roman uh, church, it's a... It's the Holy Spirit, and then, uh, so many Baptist fundamentalists want to say it's just the Holy Spirit. And of course, when the church leaves, the Holy Spirit leaves with it. No, the Holy Spirit never leaves. Are you nuts? The Holy Spirit ain't leaving nothing. This world will totally go to chaos if the Holy Ghost was to leave it. No, no, no. Uh, all things are well upheld by the word of His power, brother. And believe me, His Spirit's here, and it's here to stay, and it's uh, moving all the time too. And believe you me, uh, His His Holy Spirit ain't leaving because a lot more people are going to be saved during the tribulation period. And it's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So there ain't no Holy Spirit leaving. I mean, my Lord, be merciful. What's, what goofy's teaching? All you got to do is just read Revelation chapter 12 before you read 13, and there's the answer. Because someone's being restrained, and someone's being set free. 
and yet it reads a little different, and for that reason, it seems like most people miss it. I've been able to show this to a few of our friends, and uh, happily they've gotten it, been happy to get it. And so it's uh, very interesting to uh, share these things with people, and I ain't no scholar or anything. <laughs> and the truth is, I got it from some preachers in England, some old preachers in England. So let's read it, Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to deliver. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Yeah we recognize the devil when we see him. Yeah. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to deliver her, chi her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, and that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Again, we see the three and a half year thing once again. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they lot, loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Again, three and a half years from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there it was. We see who was the restrainer. We see how that Michael and his angels are able to overcome the devil and his angels. No, 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 no. The fallen angels that mess with women of Genesis 6 are not some angelic hosts that once upon a time only lost their first habitation Buddy, there's angels joining Satan's side today. In the future, my friend, a third of the angels will have been totaled up to fall with Satan. That clown ain't right. Aliens are coming. Praise God. In heaven, they're going to be rejoicing. Finally, here comes a... The son of perdition, he is revealed to the people of earth. And up in heaven, they're praising God because now they're going to have some quiet for at least the space of a half hour. <laughs> the accuser ain't up there no more. Mm -hmm. 
And Satan's going to know, man, he's only got three and a half years more and he's done. His goose is cooked. He's got to, whatever he's going to do, he's got to get with it. Boy, he's going to really get with getting rid of the Jews. He's going to really get with it. That's what the Bible said. I mean, how, it's as plain as the nose on my face. And yet, <laughs> like a lead balloon over the Grand Canyon, so many people miss it. Praise God, man, for the Bible. That the Holy Ghost uses Scripture, Scripture, spiritual things with spiritual. Amen? Just like he said in 1 Corinthians. And so that's what the image shows you there. There's Michael and his angels prevailing over the devil and his angels. And man, they're being cast to the earth. Hallelujah! And so the Bible, Paul here, let's go back to what Paul's telling us. Paul is so important because 2 Thessalonians is giving us this chronology so we get it. All of a sudden now, this dude seems to be at peace. He's bringing in world peace. He's made his headquarters perhaps even at Rome. He's a world ruler, but then somebody of those shepherds and principal men of Micah 5.5, somebody gets a shot off. Down he goes. Here comes the false prophet. And he raises him from the dead. Though he has a weak right eye, as the idle shepherd would, and a weak, a weak right arm. But he's had a mortal wound to the brain and now, instead of this man that was once riding a horse of peace with a bow with no arrows, now he becomes a monster. Now he moves into the temple, claiming to be God, demanding everybody worship him, and then the false prophet demands everybody worship him. The false prophet makes sure that the image of the base back at Rome is not only sitting there at Rome taking his place, but even comes alive. So if anybody wants to walk up to it and kiss it, they can. They wear, they wear the toes off idols kissing idols. What will they do when an a, a, a image of a beast comes alive? They'll wear their lips out kissing it. Taking its name, number, and mark on the right hand and forehead. So quickly... We see his end. We see his end. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Capital W. False prophet. Revelation 13. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Believe me, the son of perdition has God's attention. And God's against him. But I'm telling you, God's double against the false prophet. See, there is a satanic trinity. There is a satanic trinity. Some people try to paint God as a trinity, but no, there's a Godhead. There's a God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Bible teaches that. You can't deny it. There's a biblical satanic trinity. Like there's a mystery of godliness, there's a mystery of iniquity. There's that son of perdition. Just like there's a father. Then there's a false prophet who's an antichrist. The second beast. As juxtaposed against the son. But yet all these things are done by the power of who? The dragon, the devil himself. Just as the Holy Spirit empowered the Lord Jesus fully. Amen? And so the Bible tells us and warns us, Then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Praise God at that judgment day. They're going to be taken and cast into that lake of fire. Amen. When Jesus comes back, Revelation 19, the Bible says that, yes, he's going to come back riding that white horse. And he's going to take that beast.
beast and false prophet, put them into the lake of fire. Now the devil's going to be taken and put into the pit. And then at the end of the thousand years, he's going to be let loose out of the pit to try the men on the earth one more time. Then finally, Revelation 20, verse 10, he's taken then and he joins his son and the false prophet into the lake of fire. So Mr. Wicked, slain by the Lord's breath, the sword of his word. Amen? Amen? That's what it says here. And then shall that wicked be revealed, and the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We have false prophets all over this country. In Christian churches all over this country. Because what makes them a false prophet, preacher? They're making Christians believe the lie as truth. And the false prophet... His work to carry on Satan's activity in all kinds of counterfeit power, miracles, and signs as the false prophet. Even him whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. It's counterfeit. He's deceiving people. And the suckers are lining up and taking it. Yeah, I remember Dan and Keith telling me about this guy's coming and Jesus was coming, and Jesus, and this has got to be Jesus because oh, look at these wonderful signs he's doing, and he wants me to worship this wonderful king we got. Oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, idiot, you should have done that when Keith and Dan told you to do it then. Now you're a sucker. You're going to believe the lie because you wouldn't believe God's truth and get saved. God's going to make sure you line up to go get your new number at the post office and put it on your forehead and, or take his name or his mark and put it on your forehead and, or on your hands so you show unity with the, with the one world system and you're just another sucker. Let's go ahead and turn quickly to Revelation 19 and we'll read the wonderful end of these devils Amen. <laughs> when Jesus comes back. Because again, you know, it's so wonderful how Paul said these things, but see if you haven't read the book of Revelation, you might get up both these guys mixed up and messed up. But if you read Revelation, oh, it totally unlocks it. Sure, Paul had explained all that to the church, but when he's writing them the letter, it's just to remind them of what he taught them. And of course, maybe the, the, half the things Paul said that he wasn't allowed to tell people, because God showed him a whole lot about the future. But it was because God knew John was going to write it all down for us. <laughs> and so... Uh, when you, when you compare these verses with Revelation, it just fits like a glove. I, mean, I don't know how people miss it, but yet they do all the time. And uh, Revelation 19. 1920. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with, with which he delivered them that had received the mark of the beast, and then that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So the Lord comes back, establishes his throne on the earth for a thousand years. Verse 2 of chapter 20. Verse 3 of chapter 20. Verse 4 of chapter 20. Verse 5 of chapter 20. Verse 6 of chapter 20. Verse 7 of chapter 20. Then we finally get down here to 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. After a thousand years, they haven't burned up. They're still there and they're still suffering. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, don't listen to the false prophets. Believe the Bible. Read it and believe it and heed it. 
Do what it says. And you can sleep easy at night. And you can say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Let's all stand and pray. Lord, we're so thankful for your word that you give us all this tremendous detail. Because this is established and fixed in the Bible and in history. It's going to happen because you said so. You know the end from the beginning. We've read Jeremiah 48 today. So thank you, Lord, that you love us, you care for us. And we're to live out our lives to your glory and help us to do a good job now of speaking to our friends and neighbors, our dear Catholic friends especially so that they might be saved from hell and get to go to heaven with us by believing on the Lord Jesus as our only hope for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that you made it so easy for us to get forgiveness from our sins through the person of Jesus and what he did for us on the old rugged cross, how he died and went to hell for us, then rose again the third day. And in Jesus' name we praise you now and amen. Okay, what song do you want to sing?